Uh, so welcome to Thermodynamics 2 plus. So this is your lecture number 11. So can anyone confirm that what's the on my screen right now? Sir, so we are seeing the slide lecture 11. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so coming towards uh, the lecture number 11, which is uh, also related to your gas power cycle, uh, which we already discussed in the previous lecture as well, that uh, there will be auto cycle. Okay, so that will be related to your spark ignition engine. So now we will move towards the next step, which is your diesel cycle, okay, which is also a power producing cycle and also uh, using the air standard assumption. So now we will see what is the difference between the uh, diesel cycle and your uh, auto cycle. In this lecture, so I will start with some brief uh, introduction about the diesel cycle, uh, that where this diesel cycle comes from and who is the inventor of this. So Rudolf Diesel is the inventor of this cycle. He is basically a refrigeration engineer and who developed this type of uh, cycle. And at that time, uh, this cycle is very is prominent in order to produce uh, large torque. So in order to provide the power for the larger and the heavy uh, automobiles. Okay, so, but with the time, uh, the interest in the diesel uh, cycle is uh, not as much as comparison to the spark ignition engine. The reason behind is uh, due to the, uh, uh, because uh, in order to build the diesel cycle, we need very rapid structure as comparison to the uh, auto cycle, which is spark ignition engine, which require uh, uh, not a rapid structure. And also there will be a less noise and vibration in your spark ignition engine as comparison to the diesel cycle. So this is the main uh, idea behind the diesel uh, engines. Okay, so in this lecture, we will see that what is uh, the difference in the internal processes involved in the spark ignition and compression ignition engine. So compression ignition engine basically is uh, defined as the diesel cycle. Okay, so if there will be any question which is used, the compression cycle is used, that means that it is diesel cycle. Okay, so here it is mentioned over there, gasoline engine and diesel engine. So the main difference between uh, your uh, uh, spark ignition engine is that whenever we have to burn the fuel, we have to inject air and fuel mixture both at the same time in your uh, gasoline engine. And then we produce the spark okay, in order to produce the combustion which will move uh, your pistol from bottom red center to your uh, top red center to bottom red center. Okay, and then there will be a power stroke. However, in case of diesel cycle, what we have to do is we have to inject air first. Okay, so there will be air inside it. Okay, so then after this, after at this time, we have sent the air and fuel mixture at the same time. In this case, we have to send air first, and after the process, there will be a compression process. Okay, so then we will inject the fuel. Okay, so the fuel will come from the fuel injector. Okay, so this is the fuel injector which is sort of the nozzle. Okay, so by which we have to inject the fuel and after this we have to produce the combustion process. Okay, we will see what is the, how to produce the combustion inside it also in this lecture. So the main difference is that here there will be a fuel injector, here there will be a spark plug and in this case we have to send air fuel mixture, in this case we have to send both separately. Okay, so this is the main thing about the thing. And then there will be a constant volume heat addition process in your spark ignition and auto cycle. And in your compression or diesel cycle, there will be a constant pressure heat addition process. Okay, so this is the main difference when we have to draw the TS and PV diagram. So we will see the difference in the uh, diagrams as well. Okay, so now I will just uh, show you one video okay, so that we will get a better understanding how the diesel engines will work and how the force uh, different processes uh, take place in your uh, diesel cycles. Okay, so just we have to see the video and then we will talk about it. Okay, so most of your part in your diesel cycle is similar to uh, the spark ignition engine. So only there will be a fuel injector which is added over there and the spark plug is removed from your diesel cycle. Okay, so rest of most of the things are similar as comparison to the um, spark ignition. So now there will be first stroke, which is your intake and suction stroke. Okay, so at this time your piston is at EDC. Okay, so now the intake happens and then the intake valves will open. Okay, so there will be an intake valve. Okay, and these intake valves will be controlled by the camshaft. Okay, so 
So now the intake valves open and now what we have to do is we have to suck some air inside your cylinder. Okay, so here there will be an air which is going inside your cylinder. So at the end of the intake stroke, this uh, valve will be closed and at this time all the area is occupied by the air. Okay, now there will be a compression stroke. So from compression stroke, the piston moves from bottom dead center to the top dead center and the air inside the cylinder is compressed. Okay, and both of the valves, either to be intake or exhaust valve are closed at this time. So now the your piston will move towards the top dead center and at this time there will be an injection of the fuel by using the injector, okay, fuel injector. Okay, so the main important point over there is that in the case of your auto cycle, we have to put the spark plug which produce the ignition and then there will be a combustion process. So, but there uh, here in the diesel cycle there is no spark plug, so how the combustion process take place? So what we have to do is in the diesel cycle, we have to compress uh, compression process, raises the pressure and temperature of air that matches the auto ignition or self ignition temperature of diesel. Okay, so it's mean that by increasing the pressure and temperature of air, we get the combustion process over there, which auto ignite the fuel, which is re-injected from the fuel injector. So due to this auto ignition and that we call as self ignition, there will be a combustion process. So here there will be a combustion and now your piston again move from top dead center to bottom dead center in order to produce the power stroke which is also the expansion process. After reaching towards the bottom dead center, there will be exhaust stroke and all the exhaust gases will be removed by using the exhaust valve. And now the exhaust valve will open in order to release these gases which is resulted in your combustion process. Okay, so here there will be an exhaust valve which is open at the end of your process which is the exhaust process. Okay, so this is the processes which are involved in the diesel cycle and if I hope uh, you will get the some understanding about it. Okay, so now we will come towards the lecture again. Okay, so here it will be mentioned over there uh, the comparison between the actual cycle and diesel cycle. So if you can just notice over there, there will be index so which we already seen in the video. There will be injection of air, then the air that is occupied in the cylinder is compressed okay? and then there will be a compression process and after your compression there will be a fuel and air mixture inside your cylinder okay and then there will be a power stroke due to the raising temperature and pressure of your air there will be an auto ignition process and then your piston again move from top dead center to bottom dead center and then there will be an exhaust stroke in which all the exhaust gases will come out from your exhaust stroke. so this is the actual cycle and in the uh, ideal cycle uh, in order to do the thermodynamic analysis, we have to replace intake stroke by using the compression process. So there will be a compression process, then there will be a constant pressure heat addition process. Okay, so the difference between the auto and the diesel is that here there will be a constant pressure heat addition process. In the auto, there will be a constant volume heat addition process. So expansion process and then constant volume heat rejection process. Okay, so these are the four processes which collectively uh, make one cycle of a diesel engine. Okay, so now we will try to draw the TS and TV diagram as well. Okay, so here there will be mentioned what there. So first 
here to do with the compression process, this is isotropic and adiabatic. So it means that there will be no heat involved in it. Then there will be a addition of heat at constant pressure, then isotropic expansion process, and then there will be a rejection of heat at constant volume. So this is similar to your auto cycle, the rejection of the heat. Okay, so now starting from the PV diagram, so first we will see that how the PV diagram look like. Okay, so in the PV diagram, so for the first two process, first point, so you can say it will be there, the decompression process, so at the end of compression, the volume decreases, so it means that your point will be by over there. So you can just join two points. Okay, so this is your point number two. And this is the isentropic compression process. So now there will be addition of heat at constant pressure. Okay, so it's mean that the point number two pressure and the point number three pressure will be same. Okay, so you have to just draw the straight line. Okay, and make the temperature a pressure equal to point number two. Okay, so this is your constant pressure heat addition process Q in. So now there will be asymptotic in uh, the adiabatic expansion process. So expansion process, uh, it's a clear idea that the volume uh, will be going to increase. So it means that the point number three is here. So point number four you can draw. You can just say that it will be the point number four and you can just extend the point number one as well. Okay, so I have just extended the point number one. The reason is because uh, the rejection of heat is at constant volume. So it means that the point number four mm, and the point number one volume is same. Okay, so we have to just make a straight line over there. Okay, so this is point number four, if this you can say point number one. Okay, this is your constant volume heat rejection process. Okay, so this is the PV diagram of your diesel side. Now we will see that what is the TS, how to draw the TS diagram. Okay, so for TS diagram, 1 to 2 asymptropic process, so the entropy is constant. Okay, so and your temperature will increase after point number 1. So this is point number 1, so you can just say that the constant entropy line like this. Okay, so now addition of heat, addition, uh, addition of heat at constant pressure. So it's mean after addition of uh, heat, uh, the temperature which is at point number two will go above. So it's mean that you can just make your point number three over there, and you can just draw one like this, and you can put over there P is equal to constant, and this is your unit. So three to four, there will be isentropic expansion process. So it's mean that entropy is constant and you can just mark to point number four till this. Okay, so this is your constant asymptotic expansion process, three to four. Okay, so now rejection of heat at constant uh, volume. So it's mean that whatever the temperature at point number four will uh, get lower when it's reduced to your state number one because it is a heat rejection process. So it's mean that you can just mark point like this. Okay, and this you can say that it is V is equal to constant and this is the constant volume heat rejection process. Okay, so this is the TS diagram for your diesel cycle. So if you have any question you can also ask me. You can note it down then I will move towards the next part. Okay, so these are the clear PS and PV diagrams so that you get the better understanding of it. So you can just go through this slide by yourself. So PV and PS diagram, this is from your book. Okay, so you have to just follow these. Okay, so starting from the thermodynamic analysis of the cycle. Okay, so definitely in order to find out different parameters, for example, if we have to find the efficiency, we want to do the thermodynamic analysis and we will see how to develop the equation of efficiency which is related to your diesel cycle. 
Okay. So starting again for your processes, uh, which we already discussed, that uh, we have to start uh, building uh, some equation which is your Q in, Q out. We have to start from energy balance equation. Okay, so for Q in, okay, so in the auto cycle, uh, what happened is uh, we did for the C V T three minus T two because it is a constant volume heat addition process in auto cycle. Here it is a constant pressure process, so we have to replace the C V with C V. Okay, so this C V value is the constant uh, specific heat of air at constant pressure. Okay, so this you can easily find from your thermodynamic tables as well. A two because it is mentioned over there. And then another thing which we already know that whenever if there will be a change in internal energy. That is equal to C P T final minus T initial. Okay, uh, C P sorry. And whenever there will be change in enthalpy, this is equal to C P final minus initial. Okay, so these equation, which is your equation number, you can say one and two. These come from your chapter number four. Okay, so I think it will be on uh, page number one seventy. I do not remember it. So you have to go and you check uh, that these equation are derived also on these uh, on chapter number four. So you can follow that. Okay. So by this we can easily find that this relation is equal to change in enthalpy. Okay. So Q in we can say it will be H three minus H two, which is equal to C P. T three minus T two. Okay, so this is your equation for Q in. Okay, so previously when we have to find the auto cycle, we have to look for the internal energy value, but here we have to look for the enthalpy value. So the same enthalpy values are given. Just decide your internal energy value with a number of table as well, which is A seventy nine. Okay, so now Q out. So Q out equation is similar to your previous one because it is a constant volume. So T four minus T one. Okay, so there will be no difference in this as comparison to auto cycle. Okay, so now coming towards the efficiency. So efficiency we already know. One minus Q out over Q in. So you can just plug these value, which is Q in and Q out in this equation, and you will get the value. Okay, so CP or CV, we can just replace it with the specific heat constant K. Okay, ratio of specific heat K. So you already know K or CP or CV. Okay, so we can just get the equation of your efficiency by using this relation. Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to make one equation which is in uh, with the relation of compression ratio, and then uh, we will see that how to develop that type of equation as well. Okay, so you have to note it down. Then I will move towards the next part. So here in the dealer cycle, one another term which we have to add. Previously we see that your R value, which is compression ratio, is uh, the ratio of maximum volume over minimum volume, which is that uh, V two, or you can say cleanest volume. Now here we have to add one another term which is the cutoff ratio. So R C, which is ratio of your volume at point number three and minimum volume volume at point number two. Okay, so this term we have to define by using the point number three, and this point number three is also called Cut off point. Okay, so why we call it as a cut off point? So at this point, which is point number three, uh, the supply of fuel will be eliminated, or we just stop the supply of fuel. So that's why we just say that it will, it will be a point where we have to cut off the supply of fuel, and also there will be a uh, end of heat addition process. 
So that's why we have to just say that it is a cutoff point. And the cutoff ratio is the ratio at uh, the uh, ratio of the volume at that point, which is weekly, to your minimum volume. Okay, so now we will try to develop an equation which is the relation uh, of efficiency equation which is the relation of R and RC. So if you have any value in your problem statement and for your compression ratio and cutoff ratio mentioned, so you can easily find the efficiency of your diesel cycle. Okay, so now starting from some basic equation which we already know that for your asymptotic process, the relation that is valid is T2 over T1 is equal to V1 over V2 specific heat ratio k minus 1 okay so from here we can say that t2 is equal to t1 and v1 or v2 is r k minus 1 okay so this equation comes from t2 okay so now coming towards we have to develop all the equations in terms of your temperature 1 okay for t2 for t3 so that we can get one equation uh, for your in terms of r and rc Okay, so now we already know that the relation which is valid for your air P3, V3 over T3 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. Okay, so as from this PV diagram, you will notice that P2 is equal to P3. Okay, so it's mean that this term will automatically eliminate and that turns out to be T3 over T2 is equal to V3 over V2. And we already know that V3 or V2 is equal to cutoff point, cutoff ratio. So you can say that in terms of this, that T3 is equal to RC T2. Okay, so this is another equation. So now from here, the value of T2, you plug in into the T3 equation, so that it will be also the function of T1. Okay, so this is the equation for the uh, T3. Now you have to develop one equation for T4 as well in term of T1. Okay, so for T3 or T4 because the isotropic process between 3 to 4, the equation that is valid is T4 or V3, K minus 1. Okay, so from here you can also say that uh, R over RC, which is your uh, compression ratio over cutoff ratio, which is equal to V1 over V2 to V2 over V3. Okay, and this will be cancelled, and this will be equal to V1 over V3, and V1 is equal to V4. Okay, so we can say that your we can say V4 over V3 is equal to R by RC. Okay, so from here we can say that 3 3 over T4 is equal to R by RC K minus 1. Okay, so till this point you have to note it down, then we will move over to the next. If you have any question, you can also ask. G K one. Point number? This is the cut-off point. Yes, yes. This is the cut-off point. This is the cut-off point. Okay. This point number 3 we have to define as a point where we have to just cut off the supply of fuel okay, inside your cylinder. Okay, so if you notice in, your, in the video as well, so there is a specific point where we have to just cut off the supply of fuel. Okay, so that point we have to define as a cutoff point. Okay, and the ratio of the volume inside your piston, inside your cylinder is V3 at this time. And if you can just divide it with the minimum volume, it will be equal to your cutoff ratio. Okay. okay sir. So you can just remember like this okay. that point number three, we just have to cut off the supply of fuel inside your cylinder. Okay. 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 Okay.
This is starting again. Okay, so these are the diesel cycle analysis which we are already seeing the previous slide as well. So this you have to go through it by yourself. So the equation which I already developed. So here, uh, if you can see, uh, it is mentioned over there. So, okay, so do not confuse over there. This is basically your cut off ratio which we already described. It is V3 over V2. Okay, so these are the equation for diesel cycle. And if you have a comparison with the auto cycle, you can clearly see you know, comparison over there. Okay, so now from this, you can see there will be one graph. Okay, so if you can see this graph, this is the relation between your efficiency of diesel cycle and compression ratio. And if you notice uh, in the comparison of auto cycle, you find out that the compression ratio for auto cycle is between 8 to 12. Okay, so it means it is on a uh, less compression ratio. However, in the diesel cycle, uh, the compression ratio is high okay? so it is between 12 to 23 you can say okay and with the increase of this cut off uh, ratio uh, that is rc uh, you will find out that there will be a decrease in efficiency of your diesel cycle okay we decrease the mm, rc value okay so from here uh, there is an assignment for you using this uh, relation you have to find out okay so this assignment uh, you have to Solve for identical compression ratio. Show that the efficiency of the auto cycle is greater than that of diesel cycle. Okay, so this relation you have to prove that is efficiency of auto is greater than efficiency of diesel. Okay, so in order to achieve this, uh, there is two ways. So first is you have to just go through uh, the efficiency equation of diesel and efficiency equation of auto and just do a side by side comparison uh, by just putting the same compression ratio in the relationship which we already developed for auto and diesel and then you can find out that the efficiency of auto is greater than diesel efficiency when there will be a same compression ratio and second method is you can just assume some data in terms of problem statement you just assume some data and you can just put it uh, by using the same compression ratio in the efficiency equation and you can also find that the efficiency of auto is uh, greater than efficiency of diesel cycle for same compression ratio. So this assignment you have to submit on the same day. Next week, okay. So you have full week. So you can just send it me on the next uh, week uh, on the same day before 4.30 p.m. Okay, and you have just to mention the snapshot and just inbox me and just make the title as assignment number one. Okay, so this you can note it down, then I'll move to the next part. You have to just go through it by yourself because this is on British units, but uh, still you have some idea about that how to solve if there will be a question related to your British units. So, uh, okay, so you just go through it, and there will be uh, some units which is pound square inches, Fahrenheit, and inches square. So you have to solve this problem for diesel cycle. So here I will try to solve one equation, uh, one problem which is related to your uh, ice. Uh, SI system, okay, so which is we already practice in all the classes. Okay. So, this is your home assignment, so this you can just go through it by yourself after this lecture. Okay, so here there will be an example, so if you can just read it. So, an air standard diesel cycle, so here it is mentioned over there that uh, diesel cycle has a compression ratio of 16 
and a cut off ratio of 2. That means that V3 over V2 is given in your question. So, the ratio of your 2 hormones. So, at the beginning of the compression process, air is in the 5 kilopascal and 27 degrees Celsius. So, pressure and temperature at point number 1 is given over there. Accounting for the constant specific heat with temperature is a similar procedure. We have to use equations rather than table equal to the constant specific heat problem and determine the temperature after the heat addition process. So, we are interested to find the temperature at point number 3, which is after heat addition process, the thermal efficiency and the mean effective pressure for the diesel cycle. Okay. This is the question. So, we will see how to solve it. Because you can note down the data, then I will move towards the next slide. So again, we have to draw the PV diagram first, okay. And uh, this PV diagram we have to practice it because uh, do not uh, make any mistake while drawing the PV diagrams and DS diagram in your all the questions. So it reflect that you have not did any understanding of the thermodynamic cycle. Okay, so coming towards part number A. So part number A, your temperature is given over there. So D1 is equal to 300 Kelvin, which is mentioned from your problem statement. And then you can say that uh, for your isentropic process, T2 over T1, which is equal to V1 over V2, K minus 1. Okay, because we have to find the temperatures uh, for all the states. So either it will be 1, 2, 3. So from here, you can just put that T2 is equal to 300 Kelvin. And this V1 over V2 is your compression ratio, which is 16, and K value. 1.4 minus 1, 0.4. So you can just solve it, you will get 909.4 Kelvin for temperature at point number 2. Okay, so coming towards uh, the temperature at point number 3, which we and this is the part number A in order to find the uh, temperature at end of heat addition process. So the relation we already know that for air V3 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. Okay, from this you can say P2 is equal to T3 that is a constant pressure process so this is already eliminated so from here you can just write down T3 is equal to V3 over V2 T2 and V3 over V2 is your cutoff ratio which is mentioned in your question with the value of 2 okay so from here you can just put the value of V3 over V2 as 2 and the pressure at 2 so already find in the previous state so 909 and 4 Kelvin and you can just solve it and you will get the value of P3 as 18, 18 .8 Kelvin. Okay, so this is your part number A to find the temperature at end of heat addition process. So you can note it down then I will move towards point number B. Point number B is to find the thermal efficiency and for thermal efficiency you already know that you need the value of T4, so T4 over T3, V3 over V4, K minus 1. Okay, and also in order to find the thermal efficiency, you can use the equation which we already derived. Okay, because that equation is derived for constant uh, specific heat values. So you can just plug the values in of your R and RC and the value of specific heat ratio, and you can easily find the efficiency as well. So here I will just uh, try to figure it out that we also find the 1 minus Q out over Q in. Okay, so for this you can find the temperature for all the T4 also okay, in order to find the Q out. Okay, so you can use any method, so it's on you. Uh, I 
yeah. also on the data which is available in your question. So uh, if the R value is R C value, which is the cutoff uh, value, is not known to you, then you cannot use this relation as well. So C D value, so which is Q out because this process is constant, volume heat rejection process. So zero point seven one eight is the C D value. Okay, so T4 value which we have to find from this relation. Okay, so you can just put the value on all this one and you will get the T4 value as 791.7 Kelvin. Okay, so this you can just get from this relation. Okay, so this you can put over here 791.7 Kelvin and then the T1 value which is given in your question as well. Okay, so from your question you will just put the value as 300 Kelvin. And you can solve it and you will get 353 kilojoule per kg per kilowatt. Okay, so similarly, we also find the Q in as well. Okay, so Q in between uh, to the constant pressure process, so Cp. T3 minus T2. And CP value is 1.005 for air, and you can go over to your thermodynamic table, which is A2, and you can also find that value from that table as well. Okay, so here T3 value, which we already find in the previous uh, part number A, so 1818.8 and minus T2, which is 909.4 Kelvin. Okay, and then you can just solve it and you will get the QN value as 913.9 kilojoule per kg. Okay, so from here you will just put the value of QN and Q out in this equation and you will get the frequency of 61.4%. Okay, so from here you will get the efficiency which is your part number B. Okay, so you can just note it down and move towards the next one. which we have to find the mean effective pressure. So for mean effective pressure, we already know the equation which we already see in the auto cycle analysis as well. So W net over V1 minus V2 and if you can just take common of and V1 or V2 is equal to R and from here you can say V2 is equal to V1 over R and from there you can just take common and 1 minus 1 over R is your equation for mean vector pressure. Okay, so for mean by W net which is your Q in minus Q out, so you can just say that uh, okay, so first we have to find the V1 out as well. Okay, so V1 specific volume at 1 R T1 over T1. So R value is the gas constant which is 0 0.287. Okay, so this you either you can remember it and you can go to table A2, T1 is given in your question, T1 is given in your question and you can just solve it and you will get 0 0.906 meter to per kg. Okay, now you can just put the value, W dot net value is 913.9 minus 353 which is Q in minus Q out, specific volume at 1 0 0.906, 1 minus 1 over Compression ratio is 16. Okay, and you can just solve it, and you will get the value of mean effective pressure as 660.4 kilopascal. Okay, so this is the mean effective pressure for your uh, part number C. Okay, so if you have any question, you can ask me. So this is the solution. If there will be a diesel cycle involved, in so only difference is in your uh, two to three, which is your constant pressure regulation. And for constant pressure, you have to use the CP. T3 minus T2 and rest of most of the procedure is same as comparison to the upper cycle.
Okay, so coming towards another question, this is your 9-47. Okay, so the question is that uh, it is a similar question, but only difference is that here we have to account for the variation of specific E with temperature. The rest of the question is almost same because there is no difference about that. So we will see that how to uh, solve this problem in which there will be a variation of specific heat. Okay, so again you have to draw the PV diagram first. Okay, and after this PV diagram, so now here you already know the procedure which we have to adopt for the constant uh, variable specific heat. We have to go to thermodynamic table in order to find all the state properties. Okay, and then we can find the enthalpy's value for point number two, point number three, and then we have to find the internal energy value at point number one and four in order to find the Q in and Q out, and then from there we get the efficiency value. Okay, so starting from your point number one, which is temperature one, is given in your question. 300 Kelvin. Okay, so against this temperature, we have to go to your thermodynamic table. Okay, so from I am not going to thermodynamic table again. So you have to do it by yourself. Okay, because the procedure is same. You have to find the value of internal energy because we have to find the U1 at point number one. So U1 is equal to 214 kilojoule per kg. Also, you have to find the relative specific volume at one because we need to find different properties in order to find the state number two properties as well. Okay, so you can just note it down the value of Br1 also from the thermodynamic table A17. Okay, so from there for isotropic process, you already know the because we have to find the point number two properties, which is your temperature also and the enthalpy also and so for this you have to find the relative specific volume at 2 because uh, if we have any state property then we can go to thermodynamic table and find out the value of h and t at point number 2. Okay, so for here you already know that relative specific volume at 2 over relative specific volume at 1 is equal to specific volume at 2 specific volume at 1. Okay, and then you can say that we are to because V1 or V2 is equal to compression ratio. Okay, so you can say 1 over R, where you can just take this in the denominator over there and you can just multiply VR1. Okay, so R is given in your question, VR1 we just find in the previous step. Okay, so you can just put 621.2. And the compression ratio value is 16. Okay, so from here you can just get the value of 38.825 of Vr2. Okay, and by using this uh, uh, value, which is 38.825, you have to go to your table A17, apply the linear interpolation for temperature first. Okay, so by using this value for first interpolation, you will get temperature 2, which is 862.825. 4 Kelvin. Okay, so by, by using another interpolation in order to find the enthalpy value, because we have to look for the enthalpy value also, so H2 is equal to 890.9 kilojoule per kg. Okay, so now the state number 2 is known to us. Now we have to move towards the state number 3. Okay, so in order to find the state number 3 properties, again we have to find one properties so easily we can find the temperature at point number 3 okay, so in order to find the temperature at point number 3 the similar procedure P3 V3 over T3 is equal to P2 V2 over T2 okay, so this pressure is eliminated because this common one and then T3 is equal to V3 over V2 into T2 and you can say T3 is equal to this is your cutoff ratio 2 into T2 value is 862. From here, 0.4, and you can just solve it and you will get the value of T3 as 172.8 Kelvin. Okay, so by using this T3 uh, value, so again you have to go to thermodynamic table 
apply the interpolation, which is the linear interpolation, and you can find the enthalpy value at state number three. Okay, so enthalpy value you can get 1910.6 by using the interpolation. And now you have to also look for the red viscosity volume at three, which is 4.546. Okay, by using another interpolation. So now, now by using this relation, we can easily find uh, the Qin because now H3 is known to us and H2 is known to us. So the Qin is H3 minus H2. Okay, so you can just note it down, then we will move to the next one. B part, so B part is to find thermal efficiency. In order to find thermal efficiency, you have to find Qin. So Qin is equal to H3 minus H2. Okay, and this will be 1910.6, which we already find from thermodynamic table, and then 890.9 is also come from thermodynamic table. And from here you will get 1019.7 kilojoule. Per kg. Okay, so now we have to find the Q out as well. Okay, so Q out is equal to U4 minus U1. So U1 is known to us, U4 we have to find. In order to find U4, we also need one state property at point number 4. So either we get the point number 4 temperature or either we can get the relative specific volume at point number 4. So here we can easily find the relative specific volume at point number 4 by using the isentropic relation. So V4 or V3. And that turns out to be so it is the same procedure which we already wrote in the previous question. So R by 2 V R3. Okay, and you can just put the value of 16 over 2. V R3 value is known to us from previous part, which is part number A. So you can 4.546 and you can just solve it and you will get the value of 36. Point the specific volume which is a dimensionless quantity and by using this value you can easily find the value of u4 from thermodynamic table and which comes out to be and by using the linear interpolation 659.7 kilo joule per kg of u4 so now coming towards the q out so from here you can easily find q out so it will be 659.7 and the u1 value is 21 4.07 and you can just subtract this value and you will get the value of Q out 63 kilojoule per kg. Okay, so here this is the Q out and now you have to find the thermal efficiency. So for thermal efficiency, 1 minus Q out over Qn, so Qn is 1019.7 and you can just solve it and you will get the efficiency 36.3% okay, for the variable specific heat. Okay, so this is the part number B. So now we have to move towards part number C. So you have to note it down, then I will move towards the next part. So part number C is to find the mean effective pressure. Okay, so for mean effective pressure, the relation is W net over specific volume at one minus one over R. Okay, so 
the specific volume is the same one which we already did in the previous question as well because the data is same. So the value is which we already found in the previous question 0 0.906 meter cube per kg. Okay, so W net you can just say it will be 200 minus Q out and it will be 574.07 0 0.906 and minus 1 over 16 and you can just solve it and you will get 675.9 kilopascal of your mean effective patient. Okay, so this is your part number C. So this is the solution. So if you have any question, you can ask me. This is an easy question that we actually we can see in it. This is coming towards a question which you have to solve. Okay, so it is a similar question, uh, only the data is different over there. So you have to just assume the constant specific heat with temperature and determine the temperature after the heat addition process, T3, thermal efficiency, and mean effective pressure. Okay, so this question again you will get 0 0.2 absolute marks for all the students who will give me the clear presentation of their work. And uh, also you have to send it to me uh, by tonight, okay? Or either you can also send it to me by tomorrow. There will be no problem. If you have to understand the question, uh, I will still accept the submission. Okay? So there will be no issue. So write on, write on the question, uh, question first, okay? So then I will leave.